Right, hello, welcome back to Advent of Code. Today we're going to be trying out the slang interpreter that I've been working on. The idea behind the interpreter is that um, I can convince myself that the program is correct on small inputs without having to pay the cost of running the compiler. And then once I'm convinced the program is correct, I can compile it to get a faster program and run it on the full input. So that's the idea. So this is 2018 day four, repose record, repose record. You've sneaked into another supply closet. This time it's across from the prototype suit manufacturing lab. You need to sneak inside and fix the issues with the suit, but there's a guard stationed outside the lab. So this is as close as you can safely get. As you search the closet for anything that might help, you discover that you're not the first person to want to sneak in. Covering the walls, someone has spent an hour starting every midnight for the past few months secretly observing this guard post. They've been writing down the ID of the one guard on duty that night. The elves seem to have decided that one guard was enough for the overnight shift. As well as when they fall asleep or wake up while at their post, your puzzle input. For example, consider the following records which have already been organised into chronological order. Timestamps are written using year, month, day, hour, minute format. The guard falling asleep or waking up is always the one whose shift most recently started. Because all asleep or wake times are during the midnight hour, only the minute portion is relevant for those events. Is that always the case or is that only the case in this, in this example? Visually, these records show that the guards are asleep at these times. Okay, so this is going to draw a picture, I assume. So it's kind of a run length encoded bitmap format, disguised as uh, timestamped logs. Okay, the columns are date, which shows the month day portion of the relevant day. ID, which shows the guard on duty that day. Hmm. And minute, which shows the minute during which the guard was asleep within the midnight hour. The minute column's header shows the minute's tens digit in the first row and the ones digit in the second row. Awake is shown as dark and asleep is shown as harsh. Note that guards count as asleep on the minute they fall asleep and they count as awake on the minute they wake up. For example, because guard number 10 wakes up at 0.25, minute 25 is marked as awake. If you can figure out the guard most likely to be asleep at a specific time, you might be able to trick that guard into working tonight so you can have the best chance of sneaking in. You have two strategies for choosing the best guard or minute combination. Strategy one, find the guard that has the most minutes asleep. What minute does the guard spend asleep the most? In the example above, guard 10 spent the most minutes asleep, a total of 50 minutes, while guard 99 only slept for a total of 30 minutes. Guard 10 was asleep most during minute 24. While this example listed the entries in chronological order, your entries are in the order you found them. You'll need to organize them before they can be online. Well, it says I have two strategies, but it's only given me one. I assume then that strategy two is part two. And that might mean the thing I said about the drawing a picture is totally wrong. Okay. Rather than making my program sort this input file, I might just sort the input once. Ah, so some of the timestamps aren't within the midnight hour. Ah, but they always fall asleep within the midnight hour. But they can begin shift before midnight. So the point there is we need to increment the date. So it's 37k. It overflows, but that is not a problem. Although maybe we will fix that. So 37k of data, do we think we can sort it? Just remind myself how this works. If not, then we can just break it down by month, sort each one individually. Uh, so we just sort a gur of them. Hmm. Uh, I actually noticed a bug in this, so it creates a buff IO object for the output, but then outputs them the really slow way. So, we'll do 
through that. doing with big ends. Oh, that's for numeric comparison. Okay, fine. So it won't be using big ends. But we still need to. Uh, is it dash out big or dash out big end? I think it's dash out big end. Lost sort now. Ah, oh, it has moved it. Okay. Wow, we're finding a lot of bugs today. I better start writing these down. Now, is sort going to be able to sort our input file? And if so, how long will it take? Ooh, hmm, that can't be right, can it? Oh, okay. So I can see it doing IO at the moment. Oh, okay, it stopped, oh, yeah, okay. In that case, um, We'll have to break it down by months. Just check the grep isn't doing IO the slow way. I could really do with a copy and paste on this thing, couldn't I? this is the sort of thing that <clears throat> would actually have been quicker if I'd have um, passed the data into a more useful format and then sorted sorted it um, in memory all at once in the shorter format. It's more clear. So want to know what is it we want to know exactly we want to know which minute and which guard is most likely to be asleep find the guard that has the most minutes of sleep so count number of minutes each guard is asleep what minute does that guard spend asleep the most Wondering the best way to track the number of minutes they spend asleep. On the minute that he falls asleep, we know that he fell asleep at the current minute. The on shift guard slept from slept at. Min, knowing that uh, knowing that it goes from start to stop minus one. Also, I need to remember that if the hour is not zero, then I probably just want to increment the day. But I won't do that yet, just in case. Uh, so select, what does this one do? We want to have something that says the total minutes of sleep 
the total number of times a guard was asleep at a particular minute. So let's map guard numbers to indices. guards i equals j which is simply return i so that has the guard id and when we do that we also need to push a zero onto the total amount of time he's asleep and z mal up 60 onto the number of times he was asleep in a particular minute start then we've selected exactly one minute so that's right and then once we've finished find the guard who spent the most time asleep find the minute he was most asleep for Together. Oh, we want a big aim for this, won't we? So, this one should be... Yeah. 
necessary simply the guard number multiplied by the minute number. Let's try that on the sample then. Ah, darn. If you're using big ints, yeah, the interpreter still doesn't have a way for me to use big ints. Or does it? The normal big int.sl that you include is just to, just like empty for using the um, compiler. But if I include that one, then it will interpret the big int source. Which is maybe not what we want. Maybe we want to just not use big ints on the sample. Oh yeah, okay, fine, yeah, of course. The interpreter also does not support assembly language. So what we'll do is just not not get the answer as a big in. Our answer. So let's have uh, big ints back and run it on the real input with the compiler. Kind of surprised it worked on the first try, more or less the first try. I do need to come up with a way to use big ints in the interpreter. I think possibly what I would do is just compile several different interpreter binaries, some of which, one of which has the big int library compiled in and maybe have like a driver like SLC. So you can do SLI dash L big int and all it will do is execute the version of the interpreter that has big ints. What's quite good about the even running code in the interpreted version is that all of the library functions are still their compiled form. So programs that make extensive use of library functions run almost as fast as compiled code because the the code that's doing all the work is compiled. I will just check that that still works on the sample. Interesting. Why does that not work? Huh. Just out of paranoia, I'm going to compile it again. What could be the problem there? I don't see the problem. Curious. Well, let's run the um, let's run the interpreted one on the full input. See how long it takes. Maybe that'll still be fine. I wonder what's gone wrong there. Then I think there was a bit over a thousand lines of input. 
and we seem to be doing one person on shift, like three people on shift a second. And if we assume there's three lines for every shift, because there's comes on shift, falls asleep, wakes up, then we're doing nine lines of input per second. So if there was, what, 1,200 lines, it's going to take about two minutes. Okay. No, it looks like I didn't even need the beginning. Twenty eighteen day four part one. Fifty one thousand four hundred forty one. Too high. Interesting. Let's read the problem again. Oh, the total sleep might have overflowed. Well, we can make these unsigned quite easily. What would the total sleep be likely to be? Uh, it only said 1300, didn't it? Oh no. Oh, it didn't tell us how long he was asleep for. I wonder if the problem with the compiler is that, is there, yeah, okay, yeah, that's the problem. I forgot to return the guard number here. So it must have worked by accident. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe it worked by accident, or maybe that's actually why it didn't work. Let's. Check it again on the sample input. But forgetting to return the guard number is definitely the reason the compiled version didn't work. So I will actually have it do big ins. And I'm wondering if the total minutes of sleep needs to be a big int. No, I don't think it can be, because we've only got yeah, it can't possibly be. We've only got a thousand lines of input and there's only 16 minutes, 60 minutes per night. So the maximum amount anybody could sleep for is about 60,000 minutes. Man, waiting for the compiler is such a drag. It's quite nice that the interpreted language and the compiled language are the same though, because, oh, modulo not supporting big int, because it means I get to choose whether I want it to start up fast or whether I want it to run fast. Okay, well that's a lower number than last time, so that's good. It's really good. Strategy two, of all guards, which guard is most frequently asleep on the same minute? In the example above, Guard 99 spent minute 45 asleep more than any other guard or minute, three times the total. In all other cases, any guard spent any minute asleep at most twice. Okay, so it, we no longer care which guard spent the most total time asleep. We just want to know which guard minute pair has the largest time asleep. Interesting that we don't need to use the day of the month because I thought the day of the month rolling over was an obvious tricksy point for part two. So we don't care who spent the most time asleep. What we want to do is break this loop open. Get rid of that. Thank you. 
So if the amount of time that this guard spends asleep in this minute is greater than the best score so far, I'm going to say most means is this one. Um, well, this minute equals J, most asleep equals I, and then it will print the answer correctly. And I think that might be all we need. said the answer was I think it was um, okay now we have the choice of running it on the full input in the interpreter or compiling it I think we'll run it on the full input in the interpreter well actually maybe we'll do both kill that I will start a stopwatch Well, Bangle.js has crashed. Okay, so. So, about 10 seconds in, we start getting output, which to me suggests it takes about 10 seconds to pass the source file. The interpreter does the passing step up front. So, the interpreter builds a pass tree of the program and then evaluates the tree, whereas the compiler generates code as it's walking the. Sorry, the compiler generates code as it is passing the source file. So the pass tree never gets instantiated anywhere in the compiler. You can kind of view the call graph of the compiler as the pass tree. So that was 1 minute 35. Yay, great success. Now, let's see how long it takes to compile. That was 52 seconds. So if it runs in less than 43 seconds, then the compiled version actually would have been quicker to the full input. What does it say, 43? I think it's going to clinch it. Oh, 38 seconds. So not much in it there. Anyway, that's Avenue Code 2018 Day 4 using the slang interpreter. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.